Hey there! A friend of mine brought by a book to loan me so that I could decide whether I wanted to get a copy myself. So I decided why not check it out with my friends here on YouTube. The book that we have today is Drawing from Photos by Patrick J. Jones. I think that this book just came out recently. I heard it's possible that it's going to sell out, that other books by this author have sold out before. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside and I'll let you know my thoughts about it and who I think this book is great for and who could probably skip it. Okay, so here is the book and the cover. This is a soft cover book, but it is a very nice cover and it's been embossed. So there is a little bit of depth there on the cover. And yes, the cover is a little bit green as appears here in the picture. Let's go ahead and take a look at the table of contents. There's a foreword, an introduction, and then there's part one and part two, and part two seems to be pretty small. Part one is the photographic model, and it consists of seven workshops. So what it looks like is that this book is broken into workshops just like he would teach in a class. So we're going to be going through the process of an entire drawing with this artist from the beginning to the end seven separate times. There's the lying eye, the power of illusion, natural rhythm, stillness in motion, memories shaped by light, embracing failure, and the plateau. So what it sounds like to me is that there is discussion about uh, using photography as a reference and how it's not necessarily ideal, that photographs are not exactly accurate. Ideas having to do with figure drawing themselves like rhythm, and motion and light, and also concepts just about development as an artist, like embracing failure and what happens when you hit a plateau and you don't feel like you're improving. Then part two has praise for the camera, which is really nice and refreshing to see because most of the time in figure drawing books, what we're finding is people complaining about photographs and saying that people should not use them and that the only legitimate way to work is working from life. So I really am glad to see that in workshop eight. Then there's an afterword and a thanks at the end. So let's just take a flip through. Now I gotta tell you, I love this quote here at the top. If you can draw well, tracing won't hurt. And if you can't draw well, tracing won't help. It's just so incredibly true that, you know, there's not necessarily something wrong with tracing, but it's not gonna help you learn how to draw. And if you can't draw, it's not gonna help you work faster necessarily either, because tracing does not end up making a good drawing. So part one, talking about the photographic model, it looks like here he is discussing using photographs and he's discussing the idea that he wrote a book and started doing workshops. And so now he's created a book going through workshops. So each workshop, he is going to lead us step by step through a drawing and encourages us to work alongside him in creating that drawing, just like we're in a class with him. Photography is an immediate reaction. Drawing is a meditation. I completely agree with this quote as well, that, you know, what we're seeing in a photograph like here is just one split second of what happened. But when we draw from life, something that is different is we're continually making decisions from one moment to another and everything is changing in front of us. So that I think is giving us liberty to move away from the photographic reference and not feel like we need to copy it perfectly. That's definitely what he talks about in this book is adjusting things and not necessarily being 100% faithful to a photographic reference. So you can see here in the first workshop, this is the drawing that you're going to create with the artist if you follow this workshop. And then he has really in-depth 
uh, discussion about what he's thinking at each stage. So we have the reference photo, the eye of the Cyclops, and he's discussing his thoughts about the reference and then how he is thinking about that in order to begin the drawing. So you can really go into each step and he's encouraging you to draw along with him. Then he's looking at the rhythm here and showing the way that he's holding the pencil at that point and getting the tilt of the head and everything. So you're going to notice, and this was something that my friend pointed out to me about this, that we are going to see the same image and the same drawing again and again as we go through this workshop. Now again, we have the photo and then we have just small amounts of progress so that we really get an in-depth understanding of each step and why each change or addition was made. So once again, we're going through getting more information. He's flipping us off over here as well. <laughs> and we're starting to get some shading happening. I like that there's also a little bit of anatomy included here as we go along and also these in-depth ideas. We're getting to see very clearly how he's using tools, so using a blending stump here and using erasers. Since he blended with a paper towel earlier, now he's able to pick out highlights with that kneaded eraser. So you can really see how many times we see this image again and again. Now we're getting more of the fantasy elements and texture. And it's really nice too to see a discussion of how all that was created. There's the finished piece and we can see that in comparison to the figure. And I feel like studying this is where you can really see the differences. So. I appreciate, you know, a lot of the time when we see finished works of art, we don't see the beginning of that next to it. And, you know, it would even be nice to see the first drawing with all the oval shapes in comparison. But it's really nice here to look and see that in the photo, this edge, this half of the shadow on the leg is really dark, but it's not really dark in the drawing. And that was for artistic purpose. That wasn't you know, because the artist didn't know, that was because the artist decided that he wanted to see this rather than lose it in shadow. It's a different style of drawing. The same thing with the form shadow here on the chest. The cast shadow is left dark, but this form shadow is left lighter. Now we go into workshop two, the power of illusion. Again, we have a reference photo and there are different areas of the anatomy that are pointed out. And again, here there's more discussion of anatomy. So there's discussion of this butterfly shape on the glutes and how that is formed. And the discussion is really clearly laid out in the paragraph. So if you also are reading this book, in addition to looking at the book, you're really going to gain a lot and learn a lot. There's mention here of the greater trochanter, again, a nice anatomical reference. And at this point, I feel that we're seeing this drawing develop just like a figure drawing. Like I'm not seeing the fantasy elements here at this point, but I am seeing a really beautiful figure drawing. And I am definitely seeing how this could be translated into working from life. Once again, he's picking out the highlights with a kneaded eraser. And now we get to more of the creative part where he's bringing in some darker darks and trying to kind of veil some areas so that they seem more mysterious. So in this cast shadow, there's a lot getting blended into there. There are kind of these fanciful marks going on and a little bit of jewelry um, added to it, which gives it a feeling of a fantasy piece more so than a life drawing. 
Here we move on to natural rhythm. And the interesting thing is this one is how much he changes the face. So here the artist is using himself as a model. He's giving you some ideas about how many heads tall. Maybe he's using that in the drawing, maybe not. I cannot say that I'm actually sure. But the way that he changes the face in the drawing to become a completely different character is really pretty interesting. So there he's building the form and you can see that primarily he's building this on an anatomical understanding. I wouldn't say that there is a block in here if you follow that concept and that idea of creating a straight line block in. That's not what's going on. This guy knows his anatomy and he's really building things up based on that kind of, you know, mannequin and sense of knowing the anatomy and where it belongs. Now that he has things established, he's really pushing that anatomy and using the line work in order to kind of, you know, get things to be more chiseled and more fantastic than it really is. So you can see how he's changing his clothing into a costume using white on top of the charcoal and just adding invented fantasy elements on top of the figure. And there's the finished piece. So you can see clearly the difference here between the facial features and the overall image on this final drawing compared to the reference photo. So now we're gonna kind of flip through more of the workshops here so that we can just get the basic idea of everything that's happening. It's really cool to see this motion and to see these reference photos and how he's thinking about them and bringing them to life. I will say that if you are at a point with your work that you really need to know how to start a figure drawing, like you don't know where to begin at all, this book is probably going to be challenging to you because it doesn't really tell you how to get started. It doesn't tell you about the basic elements of figure drawing. That will be something that you already need to know when you're getting this book. But if you already have some basics of figure drawing down, you understand how to make a basic gesture or you understand how to do a basic block in and you know your basics of light logic, so you have all of those foundational skills uh, behind you, even if you're not where you wanna be, this is something where you can find some new techniques and some new approaches that may even be really liberating to you to try. What's really cool is seeing how much he moves away from the photographic references you can tell that he is not trying to exactly copy these figures, but he's getting the feeling of them, and definitely he has the anatomy of them. I think what I'm appreciating most about this is seeing individual steps and getting a clear explanation of why certain decisions were made, why certain lines were left out, why certain bits of shading were left out or minimized, why different areas like this one are being lost and not clarified when they're very clear in the photo. In this photo, we can really see what is happening on that leg and how it's going behind the arm. And here, there's just this veil of shadow placed over everything. And there's a clear intentional reason behind that and this artist is definitely sharing that with us. So for the more experienced artist, and especially for somebody who wants to veer away from just copying or just mimicking exactly what they see, this book looks like a really cool option. Here's another example of where the artist made a very 
intentional and kind of drastic change that it's really difficult for beginner artists to do. You'll notice that there's this hand over here and actually the hand is in a really nice position itself, but it's really awkward the way that it kind of pokes out from the hip and it's breaking up this nice long line on this side. So the artist has decided to leave out that entire hand in the artwork. He's showing here how since he decided to delete the hand and not include it, he also needed to change the positioning of that shoulder and that arm coming down. So it's really neat how he is showing the artists reading this book how these decisions are made, why they're made, and how they're adjusted for in order for everything to make sense. I love all this texture that is included here so it's not only kind of the wispy shapes and things getting lost in shading but then stuff being erased into there too so it almost feels like bubbles floating up. The camera is an instrument that teaches people how to see without a camera. I do personally believe that um, as an artist who teaches because I see myself how much it can help somebody to see the image flattened and to literally draw on top. Now that we are here at the end of the book, we are getting some tips on how to see and how to understand some proportion. So there are different relationships being gone over here and different ideas of looking across the form for the similar areas, like where is the hip on one side compared to another? Where is the clavicle on one side compared to another? So all of these parts that you would think would be at the beginning of the book are hidden back here at the end of the book. Different ways to understand proportion, different ways to understand the surface of the form, and ways to understand light and shadow. So if you're looking to build those skills, you do have some good information in here at the back, even if it's not a step-by-step -step how to learn how to draw the figure. Definitely there is just an abundance of information in here that can help you in learning how to draw. And then there's the afterword and the thanks at the end. In conclusion, this book, Drawing from Photos by Patrick J. Jones, I think that this is a great option for somebody who already has a bit of a background in figure drawing. This is going to be a difficult book for somebody who's never drawn before or is new to figure drawing and wants to get into it because it doesn't really have step-by-step -step instruction for how to get started and how to understand those beginning steps. Other than that though, if you do kind of have a sense of how to begin a drawing and overall an idea of how to approach shading, this does go step-by-step -step through the decision-making process, which is the important part of this book. This book is talking about not just how to look at a figure and then copy it or how to take measurements of a figure. It is talking about how to look at a photographic reference and use it as inspiration so that you're getting a lot of information from that photo reference, but you're making decisions, you're editing things out, you're changing light, you're changing shadow, and you're even adding on costume elements and other effects to make it an interesting and kind of fantastic drawing. So if that is where you are and that's the kind of thing that you want to learn how to do, this is a really good book for you. Also, if you just like to look at the pictures and maybe it's not exactly what you want to do, but you really appreciate figurative art and you want to get more of an understanding of how it is made, this can also be a really great purchase for you. I will say if you want a bigger variety of images, you might be a little frustrated with this because since it is workshop style, a lot of the book is taken up by repetitions of very similar images. So you have page after page after page with the same photographic reference 
and very small changes in the drawings. This is in contrast to a lot of books out there that has just a new drawing on practically every page, so it keeps moving and keeps you interested visually that way. This one is going to be a little bit more boring for somebody who's looking for that sort of a book, but really helpful for somebody who wants to see in-depth decisions about how to create a drawing. I hope you enjoyed this book review, and if you have a suggestion for my next book to review related to art and uh, hopefully related to portrait or figure drawing, let me know in the comments below because I'm always looking for new books. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.